Hey folks, how's it going? Uh, my name is Logan, and today we're going to be looking at Arcane Mage. And I'm pretty interested to see how this one turns out, how this video goes. Um, the reason for that is because there's not many Arcane Mages. At least not according to, like, you know, Warcraft logs and stuff. So there's there's not many uh, Arcane Parses uh, that are being done on Heroic or Mythic difficulty. Uh, which is interesting. you got to wonder, you know... Do people think it's bad? Is it bad? Uh, well, I think actually that it's just underrepresented, to be honest. I mean, I personally uh, have not played Arcane as my main spec since Emerald Nightmare. Uh, but I did play it then, and then Blizzard removed some talents and did some things, and one thing led to the other, and now I'm playing Frost like everybody else. But Arcane is actually still quite competitive, especially in the burst AoE scene. Uh, and that even... Uh, passes Frost in most situations in Mythic difficulty. Uh, but anyways, so today we're looking at Arcane Mages. And this guy's going to be dedicated to uh, newer players, or people new to the spec, rather. So let's jump right into it, though. So what is an Arcane Mage and what makes them work? What's the idea of an Arcane Mage? Well, you have two main resources. Your first resource is Mana. And uh, all of your abilities... Well, most of your abilities cost mana, and the idea is to have your mana ready to go whenever it's time to use your cooldowns. So you're going to be using your mana as if it were uh, a regular a resource you might be more used to, the same as you would uh, energy on your rogue or uh, focus on your hunter, you know, that kind of stuff. It's th it works the same way, it's just mana, and it regenerates uh, quite differently. But the other interesting thing is, is our, how it interacts with our second resource. And our second resource is Arcane Charges. So an Arcane Charge is generated by uh, three of our abilities being Arcane Blast, Arcane Missiles, and Arcane Explosion. So each of those three abilities, when they damage a target, will generate one Arcane Charge. And you can see here on my UI, there's four of these empty, like, you know, gray boxes or, or uh, green, whatever. Uh, whenever you generate a charge, these boxes will fill up with a blue Arcane Charge. And each of those charges, so we'll look at Arcane Blast here, for example. Each charge increases the damage of our Arcane Blast by 73%. But with each Arcane Charge, the cost of Arcane Blast increases by 125%. And it's the same uh, scaling ratio for each ability. Uh, 73% increased damage and 125% increased uh, mana cost. And now the damage uh, scaling is from our mastery, so there's a bonus from our mastery, but we'll talk about uh, stats in a little bit. So you can see though, as you hit four arcane charges, you're going to be doing a substantial amount more damage than you would at zero arcane charges or, letter, or two or whatever. Four arcane charges, that's where your damage comes from. But, the mana cost of a single Arcane Blast at four Arcane Charges is a lot. It is a seriously large amount of mana. You could not, like, at four, if you started casting uh, Arcane Blasts at four Arcane Charges and you were at full mana, you would be empty in very few number of casts of Arcane Blast. So the idea is, is to maintain, or do as much as you can at this four Arcane Charges mark, but you have to be, uh, in the back of your mind, you have to know, I'm trying not to spend all my mana because I need it for the, my upcoming uh, cooldowns. So you have to dump your charges with Arcane Barrage. Arcane Barrage gets rid of whatever charges you have and throws them out at the target and up to whatever number are nearby based on the number of charges that you ha are, are dumping, which will almost always be four. And then you repeat the cycle. You go back to zero, and you start at low mana cost with zero charges and build up to four. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, once you're at four, we also have this ability uh, called Arcane Missiles. And Arcane Missiles are a proc that's generated from your abilities with an increased chance to proc from your Arcane Blast. But you can hold up to three of these procs of Arcane Missiles. And they cost zero mana. And these are largely the crux of what makes the spec work okay so you generate these procs and whenever you have a proc and you use it it's channeled from uh well from the beginning of the channel to the end 
and because it costs no mana, you always want to use it with four arcane charges. Because that's when you're doing the most damage, and that's when everything is the most expensive for mana, but arcane missiles are free. So you want to use these at four charges, and while you're channeling, you're also regenerating mana, which is a huge and hugely important factor. So something to consider on top of all of that, because you can hold three charges, you never ever want to cap at three charges. So, never, so whenever you hit three charges, or three, uh, yeah, three procs, I guess, of arcane missiles, you need to use one so that you don't uh, potentially generate a, a fourth one, but you can't hold four, so you've only ever have three. So those are wasted uh, procs, wasted resources. So the pri you always want to prioritize never having three, but as soon as you hit four arcane charges, then you want to then use your arcane missiles. And we'll go through a regular, like a, a simple rotation here soon. And uh, I should also mention, you're going to hear me say uh, conserve and burn phases uh, throughout this pretty frequently. So the idea with the conserve and burn theory is that during your conserve phase, and this might come to a shocker as some, to some people, but uh, during your conserve phase, you're trying to conserve mana. Yeah. But then during your burn phase, get this, you're burning it. You're getting rid of it. <laughs> so what you do then is so you, you burn your mana and you go down to you know zero or near zero mana after using your cooldowns and you use your ability called evocation. And evocation is a 4.8 second channel, at least with my amount of haste, it's 4.8 seconds. And that will uh, generate back up to full mana. No matter what percentage you are at, you will end up at 100% mana if you complete the entire channel. So... The idea of the burn phase then, and we'll go through cooldowns now, because these are your three main abilities, right? Arcane Barrage, Arcane Blast, Arcane Missiles. These are what are going to, these are your ones you're going to be pressing. But we have several cooldowns. We have Mark of Aleneth, which is our artifact ability. On a one minute cooldown, it applies a six second dot to the target. That dot uh, pulses, does some AoE damage around it on top of obviously ticking onto the target that you cast it on. And then after six seconds, it will detonate. And when it detonates, it will do a substantial amount of damage to the target and also stuff around it. We will want to be pairing that with Rune of Power. And Rune of Power is a uh, talent. that We'll be talking about talents here in a little bit. Um, but we'll be always pairing Rune, or Mark of Aleneth with Rune of Power. So that's something to also keep in mind as we keep talking here. But here's the, here's the granddaddy of all the cooldowns. We have Arcane Power. For 14 seconds, you deal 60% more damage, and your spells cost 60% less mana on a one and a half minute cooldown. 60% people. I can't think off the top of my head uh, any other cooldowns in the game that offer a percent damage increase like that one. So that's sort of where the idea of the burn conserve thing comes in. That's why it's so crucial for this spec to be revolved around dumping as much uh, damage as many hard-hitting abilities as possible into this arcane power window, which is why you drain your mana during that duration, even with 60% uh, reduced cost. So that's that guy, and then we also have Presence of Mind, and Presence of Mind is a one-minute cooldown, and it makes your next two arcane blasts instant cast, which fits into the philosophy of when you use arcane power, put as many abilities as possible into that window, okay? So let's, uh, before we go any further, let's let's check out uh, just the basic, like, uh, simple conserve rotation. So this would be uh, after we had done got done burning our mana, we we're trying to keep our mana at a relatively, uh, not high necessarily, but we're trying to keep it up high enough that whenever we use arcane power next, we're prepared for it and we have enough mana to make that arcane power uh, very powerful. So let's, uh, first thing I'm going to do here is we're going to build up to four arcane charges with by casting arcane blast. So here's, here are the uh, missiles. It's a one charge of arcane missiles. Now we're at four charges of arcane charges. So I'm going to use a missile. I'm going to weave in an arcane blast. Weave in the next arcane missile. Now we've got a nice proc there. So now I'm going to probably dump after this one. There we go. So now I went back to zero charges. Building back up to four. I'm going to cast this here at four charges. Get rid of the next one. And I'm going to dump with Arcane Barrage. 
button. Here we go. This is this is this is it. These are these three buttons doing what they were meant to do. You're building damage, and then you're uh, staying as long as you can at the high damage point, and then you're kind of maintaining there a little bit. And then when it's getting get pretty touch and go with the mana cost, you dump with uh, with arcane barrage, and you keep repeating this over and over again. That's your conserve phase. Um, and I should uh, note. If you watched closely, whenever I was casting Arcane Barrage at my mana percentage, which I have indicated right here, uh, my mana goes up. And that's due to the legendary uh, legs, the Mystic Kilt of the Rune Master, which is a very, very powerful legendary for Arcane. Uh, easily the best and most commonly used. There are, would, there are times when you won't use it and you'll prefer other ones, but in general, it's the best legendary. And it just refunds mana based on uh, the number of charges that you uh, dump with Arcane Barrage. So there's the Conserve phase. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about Talents next. Before we go into our Burn phase, the Talents, I want to touch on these first. So Arcane Familiar at level 15 is you summon a little pet who always frickin' despawns. I mean, always despawns. Uh, but he just does a little bit of damage to the target and he gives you 10% extra mana. Pretty boring, pretty underwhelming. Uh, amplification, on the other hand, increases the damage that your arcane missiles do. And this is going to be your go-to talent, like, all the time. Uh, there's just really no reason not to, because uh, Words of Power is also pretty underwhelming. It sounds like it would be good, with an increased percent chance to generate uh, missile charges based on the mana you have available. But the thing is, you're not going to have that much available most of the time. You're going to hover around the same-ish percent preparing for your burn phase. And on top of that, you don't really have, usually have too many problems generating arcane missiles, so it's just, it's just not that great. Level 30 is interesting. So we now we have Shimmer and Slipstream. These are going to be the two you'd pick from. Mana Shield is a defensive, which consumes mana. Uh, what? I mean, you kind of need mana as an arcane mage. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Sure, I'm sure it has, definitely does have uses, uh, specifically in the Arcane Mage Mage Tower challenge, but uh, generally not gonna ever take this. So we have Shimmer and Slipstream. Shimmer, same uh, as it is for Frost and for Fire, replaces Blink, gives you a second charge, and allows you to cast Shimmer while casting an ability. So for example, I'm gonna be casting an Arcane Blast here. So here we go, cast Shimmer, Keep, keep casting, cast Shimmer again. I'm gonna displace now, and if you turn your camera fast enough, you can actually uh, keep right on going, doing what you're doing. See? So that's why I personally prefer Shimmer, and most of that uh, also comes from the fact that I've been using Shimmer for a while now, and once you get used to Shimmer, boy, I'm telling you what, Blink really blows <laughs> after you're used to shimmering everywhere. However, the most common choice among arcane mages is Slipstream, where, which allows you to cast uh, or channel arcane missiles and evocation while moving. And the reason this is so good is because uh, if you have a heavy movement uh, ability coming up, a good example would be the uh, uh, ability on Fallen Avatar fight in Tomb of Sargeras when you got to run from the puddles underneath underneath you that are spawning. You could have uh, you could bank one or two. Uh, procs of your arcane missiles and be throwing them out there while you're moving and avoiding that damage and also with evocation if you don't get a full channel off of evocation when you need to like if this gets interrupted for one reason or other due to a knockback or an ability that's targeted you and it's going to kill you if you don't move uh, if this doesn't finish channeling you're in bad shape that's not going to be good for the rest of your fight because now you're at lower mana than you should have been <laughs> considerably lower mana so Slipstream can help alleviate some of those pressures and stress. Um, moral of the story with either one of these, and an overwhelming uh, point to make about Arcane in general, is that you really need to know what you are doing yourself with your spec, and also the fight mechanics, because they very much dictate how you use your cooldowns, and this spec revolves around your cooldowns. So, you know, take that as you will. Moving on, though, we have Mirror Images, which is pretty crappy for arcane they don't benefit from anything you do your charges mastery nothing so don't take them as uh, arcane rune of power on the other hand does benefit very much or work well with arcane being a bursty you know 
frequently bursting uh, spec, having an on-demand 40% increased damage uh, is pretty obvious to take. Uh, Encanter's Flow is okay. It's nowhere near as good as Rune of Power, but if you're moving around like a wild man all the time or running Mythic Plus uh, with a tank who's, you know, double heroic leaping ahead or something like that, Encanter's Flow can be good in that case. Level 60, we have Supernova. Supernova, uh, currently, in my opinion, is another Mythic Plus talent. It does damage to the, your main target, and then it does a little, it does less uh, damage to its surrounding targets, which is great and all. You could potentially move it for or use it for a movement fight because it's instant cast. It would give you something to cast while moving. But the in Mythic Plus, I liked it because it has, uh, it's a knockup, so it's an extra interrupt uh, or you know stun for pack of mobs or that kind of thing plus it's fun to watch your melee and sometimes your tank even you know freak out when the mobs are flying up in the air and then we have uh other talent charged up charged up is your uh, main go-to single target deal you use it and you go from zero to four charges for four arcane charges which has obvious uses it's a little bit more high maintenance and it's a little bit overshadowed right now in Tomb of Sargeras because of the Arcane Mage 2-piece set bonus, which I guess we'll look at here. Uh, activating, activating Presence of Mind, which as we said earlier, remember this is uh, makes our two Arcane Blasts instant. Activating Presence of Mind generates four Arcane Charges and increases damage. But So that kind of more or less takes the place of Charged Up, even for single target. You can still take Charged Up, and it does technically sim better, than uh, Resonance for single target, but Resonance is just always a nice go-to passive, you know, damage buff. And it increases the damage your Arcane Barrage does by 25% per target hit. That 25% includes on a single target. So your Arcane Barrage, even on one target, will do 25% more damage. Obviously, if, it, if you hit uh, four targets, one for each charge of your Arcane Barrage, then there's going to be 100% extra damage from each of them. Resonance is just a solid go-to all around. It's not really ever bad pick. Level 75, it doesn't matter. Chrono Shift, nice passive little speed buff every now and then. It's the one I choose, but you can pick whatever you'd like. Level 90, Nether Tempest is a dot that you put on the target. And that dot, uh, when it ticks, does a uh, little bit of AoE splash damage to stuff around it. It's, its damage is pretty low right now, which is why it's not really taken. It used to be good back in Emerald Nightmare when I played Arcane as my main spec, uh, but they've since nerfed that, and it really just doesn't have a place at the current uh, point in time, at least especially in Tomb. Uh, and then we have Unstable Magic, chance for your Arcane Blast to explode and do a little extra damage on hit. It sounds okay, especially considering how hard some of your arcane blasts will hit. It, it hits hard when you're during your cooldowns. It it smacks the target pretty good. But this is this has a adds a layer of RNG that's just kind of meh. Um, but erosion, on the other hand, is just so much better, which is why neither of these two are really taken. Either the, even though neither of them are horrible, erosion is just so much better. Erosion essentially amounts to being an 8% damage buff, because you're never really going to lose the stacks, or you're not going to lose them often. Uh, and even if you do lose them, for whatever reason, it takes an extremely small amount of time to get them back, because each time your arcane missiles hit, so one channel of arcane missiles will add like four or five stacks of uh, erosion to the target. So it's pretty much, overall, this is an 8% damage increase to your single target. So now level 100, however, We've got Overpowered, and Overpowered is what makes this spec kind of ridiculous in terms of its burst right now, because 60% extra damage, that's what makes Arcane Power uh, larger than what it yours usually is. So we've got 60% extra damage and 60% reduced mana cost. This is just the go-to talent, like, all the time. Uh, Temporal Flux, which you'll see I have highlighted here because I'm using the uh, Mage Ring that gives you a talent, that's what it gives you, it gives you Temporal Flux. Make sure your Arcane Blasts uh, have a shorter cast time based on their shorter cast time, the more charges you have, uh, which is good. It's actually really good, uh, but it's just not as good as Overpowered, but it makes your uh, burn phases even better. So if you can combine these two together, like with the ring, it becomes a very potent, potent mix. 
more arcane blasts into the overpowered overpowered talent and then we have arcane orb arcane orb is an aoe ability and i wish it was better and was used more because it's really fun uh, when you use arcane orb you generate one charge and you also then generate another charge based on the number of targets you hit so here i'm at zero charges i'm going to gain one and then i'm going to toss this one out and it's going to hit that guy and i'm going to have two charges boom so it's a nice uh, instant uh, generator for charges and you can see it, it hits uh, it hits pretty pretty good 867k I mean that was a crit but uh, multiply that times a whole pile of targets that's a lot you can and you can rotate uh, arcane orb in with lots of uh, arcane barraged with uh, resonance and another orb and lots of arcane explosions which we haven't talked about yet if we need to I'm not really sure it's an arcane explosion this is it I guess this is Arcane Explosion. This is your AoE. You just uh, spam this, and that's it. <laughs> you spam Arcane Explosion, and then rotate in some some Arcane Barrages so you're not out of mana so quickly. But so yeah, that's that's Arcane Orb. That's how that works. I guess we're ready to talk about the burn phase now. So what's where Arcane gets tricky is how all of its cooldowns line up over the course of a fight, and if something if your cooldowns get sort of uh, out of sync with each other then they can start to cause problems so it's really important to know how they all function together and when which ones are going to come up when uh, it's another reason that you need to know the fights very well uh, for your for your arcane mage to to perform well in in raid encounters so let's look right away here just at the uh, opening burst rotation so i'm going to start off by casting mark of aloneth and then cast rune of power and then cast Arcane Power, and then cast Presence of Mind. Now I'm casting Presence of Mind and, and I'm doing it in that order because of the two-piece. If you don't have the two-piece, or if you're not using Charged Up, then you will want to generate four Arcane Charges. So you'll be cast four Arcane Blasts, okay? And then you'll cast Mark of Aloneth, Rune of Power, Arcane Power, Presence of Mind. I'm just using Presence of Mind as my Charge Generator as well. So let's see if I can manage to pull that off. Uh, while while talking, so I'm gonna go Mark of Aloneth, Rune of Power, Arcane Power, Presence of Mind, and there we go. Now we're into our burn, and we're just and I'm prioritizing Arcane Blasts right now because of the uh, damage re or mana reduction, and I'm also with that in mind. I'm still also not ever capping with my missiles. So now after this uh, Arcane Power dies out, pop my next Rune of Power. So now uses all of my charges of Rune of Power. And now we're dumping more mana. Trying to get a nice little bit of damage in during the rune. And I'm going to evocate. There we go. And then once we get back to 100, next fall off with our arcane blast. And now we're sort of we're more or less in the conserve phase now. And I'm going to go down a little bit more, just because I can. But I'm still keeping con conservation in mind. So now I'm going to dump. And now we're building back up and repeating that process. Now what's interesting about all of this is how stuff lines back up. See, look, now I'm already cut, casting Mark of Aloneth again, putting my rune down, always using the two together, and putting a pile of damage into the rune, or put in during the rune's duration, and then going right back. So you'll see uh, how Mark of Aloneth, whenever it detonates, regenerated 20% of my mana, and that is due to an artifact trait uh, I will discuss briefly here in a little bit. Now we've got Arcane Power coming back up, and we'll notice Evocation is about 30 seconds left, so I want to be a little bit careful. I don't want to use Arcane Power and then be out of mana and have Evocation still too far away. So I'm actually going to... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast one more, and I'm going to dump these. Now I'm going to Rune of Power, Arcane Power, and then use my Presence of Mind. And now we're burning again. And the reason you don't want these to be too far apart uh, is for an obvious reason. If you use arcane power too far from uh, evocation being ready to go, then you can cause problems with yourself, and you'll really be having a hard time if they're not together. You don't want to end up with 15 seconds where you have zero mana. All right, we're just going right back to where we started. Get rid of some some. Uh, mana here, regenerate that, get the missiles out, and barrage, 
This is it. This is Arcane Mage. You guys can handle this, I'm telling you. You can definitely handle it. It's going to take some practice, though, because you need to get very comfortable with the mana costs, and you need to learn how and when to make the decision decisions to uh, cast that one more Arcane Blast or dump your with your Arcane Barrage. Doing that perfectly is what separates good Arcane Mages from bad Arcane Mages. There's a very large gap between good and bad Arcane Mages, which is something I really like about the spec, personally. Um, but that's just the way it is. So let's take a quick look at stats, and I'll, before I talk about any stats, there is no stat order, okay? There's no stat order. There's no, you need this, this, that, and then you need that. That just doesn't happen. So there's a generalized-ish order, but Arcane is very uh, odd in its secondary stat scaling. Generally, and I say generally loosely, your critical strike and your versatility are going to be your better stats. However, when you're at low gear level, or if you do not have the Mystic Kilt of the Rune Master or the Legendary Helmet, the Gravity Spiral, Mastery has is higher value at that point. But it still falls off pretty quickly. But you need a little bit of Mastery for that extra mana which you get from the Mastery. Increase your mana pool. But the damage bonus from your Mastery is really abysmal. Uh, which is unfortunate. So critical strike is good. Versatility is good. With all these percent modifiers, versatility just adds more on top of that. And then haste is also good. Uh, haste and mastery, you'll both need to, you'll need to kind of feel both of those two things out for how comfortable you feel with uh, the way things play. Uh, I have a little bit too much haste at the moment, but it kind of is what it is. And I know that sucks. You come to a guide looking for guidance, and they tell you to feel it, feel it out on your own. <laughs> But uh, that's kind of just the way it is. I highly recommend uh, simming yourself in some way or another. Either find somebody who knows how to do it or check it out yourself. Go to raidbots.com. Uh, they actually use simulation craft and you just input your character info in, tell it what you want it to do. It's a very nice interface. Uh, and then hit simulate and it sends the data to their servers and then they send you back the results. Uh, I recommend doing that because the, your stat weights will change literally by the piece but you swap out one piece of gear and your stat weights are going to change which is annoying and frustrating but that's just the way that it is so with all that talked about let's talk about some ui stuff quick and i use tell me when to track my stuff and you can use weak auras by all means if that's what you prefer i just find tell me when to be a little bit easier and i've been using it now for a while uh, main things you want to track first of all and first and foremost is your mana you can use ELV UI's mana or whatever thing you want, but you need some way to track your mana accurately and quickly and easily. So that you can make those really quick, sometimes uh, on-the-fly decisions of when to dump charges and when you're going to cast one more ability, that kind of stuff. Uh, so then these guys here are mostly just uh, minor cooldowns, like things like Charged Up or Supernova. And then this one here tracks the charges and cooldown of my Rune of Power. I'm tracking Concordance for probably no reason at all. This one here is a Touch of the Magi, which is a debuff on the target from your artifact weapon. And then this tracks the cooldown of uh, Arcane Orb. And I have this stuff up here just so that it's closer to the center of my screen around my character. So that my eyes are up here and I'm not down here staring at my, at my bars or when everything's going on in the middle. Uh, and then these guys here... Uh, this one here is Evocation. This tells me the buff on me and the cooldown remaining. And then this uh, is your Arcane Power, which does the same. Also functions for Arcane Power, or for Icy Veins and Combustion. But this shows me the cold or the uh, buff on myself from those cooldowns. How long they have left and whatnot. And then after that happens, then it tells me the cooldown remaining on those abilities. Same story with Mark of Aloneth or your... Uh, uh, other artifact weapons for your other specs. This shows the dot on the target, and then this uh, is the cooldown of the ability. So those are the ones I really recommend. Definitely these three, and definitely your mana. Uh, outside of that, all of this other stuff, is, these are all just trinket procs. And this, these are the meta icons, which are these eyeball deals down here. These don't ever show up. So that's those guys. Let's take a look real quick into L of UI. And that would be through here. And the reason we're doing this is to look at these arcane charges. All right. 
So these arcane charges are done through LVI. If you go to unit frames, and then open that up and expand it, go to player frame, and then with all these tabs up here, you want to go to class bar. And your class bar is this bar of arcane charges. And you'll see if I enable and disable it, there it goes. Now, by default, your class bar is attached to your health frame, which is going to look similar to this. I like it in the middle, for reasons I already explained. And you can change the height and all that kind of stuff and move it around if you go to toggle anchors. Just move it everywhere, whatever you want to do. But that's it. That's all that there is to it. Um, real quickly, I'll look at, I want to show some macros. Uh, presence of Mind, I have macroed to Arcane Blast. So Presence of Mind is instant off the global cooldown. So this macro will cast Presence of Mind and immediately will activate one of those uh, Arcane Blasts. So it just removes a, a key press out of the rotation. Um, another one to look at, and these come with a little bit of a caveat. So Arcane Missiles this is, is a channel, you know but you can interrupt it very easily by casting another spell. So if you're in the middle of an Arcane Missiles cast and you've still got, you know, half the cast remaining, those last two waves of Arcane Missiles that are supposed to go out will just be overwritten by the other spell that you're pressing, waiting for Arcane Missiles to finish. So this macro is a no-channeling macro. So Show Tooltip's going to show you Arcane Missiles, and then it's slash cast, and then the condition is if you're not channeling, if you're no, not channeling, you'll cast Arcane Missiles, right? So this allows you to, if you're in the middle of a cast of Arcane Missiles, you can then be spamming your Arcane Missiles button, and you won't interrupt the one you're currently casting and overwrite it with the second one. And that's the same deal uh, with Arcane Barrage and pretty much all of your abilities. You can uh, make no channeling macros to prevent yourself from doing that. If you're a new player, I hi or new to Arcane, I highly recommend using these macros, actually. Uh, at least until you get used to the feel of the spec. You don't need to be worrying about uh, channel clipping and that kind of stuff just yet. However, if you do get comfortable with it, or and you are comfortable with that kind of stuff, these can introduce a small amount of latency into your rotation. There will be a small gap between your casts because it's checking that macro. Uh, so if you're really, really pushing for DPS, in the future down the road. Keep in mind that these will introduce some latency and result in a DPS loss. However, if you're a little bit, uh, if you're really kind of spazzy in your keyboard, which I am sometimes, there's no shame, uh, these actually will be a DPS increase because you won't be cutting off so many uh, arcane missiles short. You won't be neglecting or won't be denying them the damage that they should be doing. Okay, so that's pretty much the gist of the whole spec. We went through it all pretty good there. Um, I guess the only thing, other thing to do would be check out legendaries real quick. Um, and they're pretty straightforward. You can find this kind of information all over the internet. The, the legendary legs, probably the uh, default BIS legendary. They're not really ever bad. Gravity Spiral is your, your other mana regenerator. Gives you an extra evocation charge. And this actually you would use in place of the legs. Case, in place of the kilt, as it's commonly known, just as the kilt. Uh, gives you an extra charge of evocation with the helmet and that's this is better in a short duration fight so if you're in a farm boss that's going to die in you know two and a half minutes or something or, or less this will actually allow you to stay at four charges longer because you won't be casting many arcane barrages in that amount of time which devalues the kilt by a significant margin the shoulders are very good they're great especially great for uh, aoe and mythic plus dungeons with an extra or a chance for arcane orbs whenever you dump your charges. And then we also have the Court of Infinity, which is a passive buff to your Mark of Alaneth ability. Also pretty strong for AoE, especially if it's a short burst AoE, that kind of stuff. Build those stacks up, put your rune out, or put your Mark of Alaneth out there, and everything, you know, clumped up real nice, especially with a Blood DK with the Mass Grip. Oh boy. Clumped up real nice on top of the boss, and that thing detonates. Whoo, that's a lot of damage. And then the last two that are of note noteworthy is the Shard of the Exodar, which is uh, the Mage Shared Ring. This one uh, gives you extra heroism usage, potentially up to three if you have a coordinated group where you, you use yours on the opening pull, and then you have your Shaman buddy or other Mage buddy pop uh, uh, heroism or whatever. 
sometime whenever you ask for it. And then five minutes later, whenever your time warp comes back off of cooldown, then you can get a third heroism in a matter of a six minute fight, which is pretty, pretty crazy if it happens just right for you. But then the other uh, good one is Soul of the Archmage. And this one actually paired with the Mystic Kilt of the Rune Saber is more or less BIS for Arcane in single target. Uh, but those are all depend on fight, you know, fight lengths and adds and stuff. So, but those are, that's the general idea between uh, between legendaries. Uh, I did mention. I know I said it was going to end this like five minutes ago, but uh, artifact real quick. Talked about this. This is the one that uh, makes your Alanet, mark of Alaneth restored mana. Their fourth golden trait makes your arcane explosion replicate itself, depending on the last location. Um, but then, as far as other important traits go, there's a couple of them that are pretty decent. That being Aegwyn's Fury with the increased missile damage, uh, Aegwyn's Imperative, which is uh, increased duration from Arcane Power, Ethereal Sensitivity uh, gives you an increased chance to generate Arcane Missiles, uh, and then we have Aegwyn's Intensity, increased crit chance f from your Arcane Missiles, and also we have uh, Aegwyn's Wrath. Those are, your, those are your best ones. Those are your best traits. However, none of them are so OP that you're going to be, you know, sacrificing a pile of item levels from your weapon just to have one of them, just to have one of those traits. Uh, generally, good thing to keep in mind in most cases, three item levels on your weapon, not three relic levels, but three item levels to your weapon will be an upgrade, which is one of the nice things about Arcane. I can't stand when I'm, I've got a, you know, huge high item level uh, relic in my bag and I can't equip it because the one that's 30 item levels lower is better. So that's that's never fun. That's not the case with Arcane, so that's good news. All right, guys, that sums up uh, Arcane Mage. So if this video helped you out at all, please, by all means, uh, drop me a like and subscribe. Leave some comments, some feedback, whatever floats your boat. If you dislike the video, you can go ahead and dislike it too, but, you know, whatever works for you. Um, so, all right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.